This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Hello. Hello, you are not audible. Okay, sorry, my my keys are mute. I will just repeat again. Okay. Uh, no, it's audible. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we had we had two two sessions till now. Okay. The first one is a complete demo uh, where we discussed about uh, software testing types, uh, importance of performance testing, load runner architecture. Okay, and then we had a demo. Uh, we recorded a simple script, replayed it successfully, and then we went through the course content. Okay. Yesterday, we discussed that performance testing is measured in terms of speed, stability, and scalability. Okay. Then we, uh, then we discussed different types of performance testing. Okay. We talked about load testing, then stress testing. Okay. Then endurance testing, scalability test, volume test, and spike test. Okay. We did not cover uh, failover testing. Okay. Which we will uh, discuss today. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Okay. We will discuss uh, importance of software architecture. Then we will discuss what is a server. Okay. We will discuss entire architecture. Okay, we'll discuss about uh, protocol and what are the different protocols available in VGen. Okay, then, then we'll discuss about load balancer. And finally, we'll discuss about failover testing. Okay. So, first, uh, why software architecture is very important from a performance tester's point of view. Okay. I will give you one small example of why we need to understand software architecture as performance testers. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, there is an application and then there is a uh, sign in phase where you have to enter the username and password. Okay. You enter some username and password and click on the submit button. Okay. Uh, assume that the login is successful. But let's say it took 30 seconds or 60 seconds for the user to log in. Okay. Ideally, what is the industry standard that we discussed yesterday? Uh, it should be like two to three seconds depending on the project architecture. Okay. But let's say it is taking 60 seconds or 100 seconds. The login process is completely slow. 
right you enter the username and password click on the submit button and the login is very very slow then what could be the issue uh, how do you identify the performance issue so you know that the login is slow but you don't know the reason for that right for example when you enter the username and password and click on the submit button you don't know what is happening in the back end so whatever the issues because of which the login process is slow are called bottlenecks okay whatever the issues because of which the login process is slow are called bottlenecks okay generally uh, we call them performance issues but in performance testing terminology we can call them bottlenecks okay if you find any issues they are called bottlenecks okay now to identify to identify these bottlenecks we need to understand the architecture Uh, if you say that the login is slow and if you want to identify the root cause then you need to understand what is happening when you click on the submit button okay uh, what is happening when you click on the submit button in the back end okay you need to identify that first then only you will be able to fix the issue uh, otherwise uh, how will you know what is happening okay for that reason we need to understand the software architecture okay you click on the submit button and in the back end it is going to the uh, whether it is, is it going to the database or uh, is it going to some other third party component so what exactly is happening in the back end uh, we need to know that okay for that you need to understand your project or software architecture okay now uh, server okay uh, in any software architecture the most common term that we have to discuss is server okay so what is a server so uh, this term server you will be using every day in your project okay every day when you, you are working in any performance testing project you keep on using these terms like server okay then what is a server uh, in simple terms a server is nothing but a software program or hardware okay so here uh, this is the client okay let's say this is the server okay and then client is sending a request and you are getting the response okay the client is uh, the client request is sent to the server and the server is sending the response back Okay, so how do you define a server in this context? It is a software program including hardware. Okay, because without hardware, a software cannot run, right? So any software program which can understand your request, process your request, and then send the response back. Okay, for example, from here, request is going to the server and then the server will have to understand it first okay without understanding the client request uh, it can't process okay so first the server will understand and then it will process the request and then send the response back okay so these three steps are mandatory okay these three steps are mandatory if you want to call any machine a server okay basically it will have to understand your request process your request and send the response back okay so you can write like this okay any software which is capable of doing the above is called a server okay again uh, software alone cannot run on its own okay. 
okay software alone cannot run its own right it needs some hardware support so a combination of both is called a server now entire architecture okay the underlying architecture okay the underlying architecture of any project will have some components shown like here client web server app server okay and database server uh, this is the typical uh, architecture of any web application okay uh, whenever you click any link or a button on the ui the request will go to the web server right from the web server it will go to the app server from the app server it will go to the database server okay similarly the response will come back from database server to app server app server to web server and then to client okay uh, depending on the requirement the app server will execute some code and interact with the database server and fetches data for us okay now we'll try to understand this uh, what is this uh, web server app server and database server okay so uh, whenever you develop any website you host the website on a particular web server okay so basically a web server is something which will host a website okay now um, i will write here okay it is something which will host a website okay so basically web service something which will host a website okay uh, so what is a website then in simple in simple terms a website is nothing but a collection of web pages right you, you have so many web pages that will together become a website okay and you can host it on a web server okay so along with hosting a website this web server is also responsible for taking care of http and html data okay that will be displayed on the client side browser okay so all in all the main purpose of web server is to host website and also to provide static content okay it also provides static content okay it is also responsible for uh, giving http and html data okay for example okay i will uh, open one website okay i will open uh, IRCTC website okay here when you click on any link or any button okay what will happen a an HTTP okay HTTP or HTTP request uh, will go to the web server okay uh, in this browser you can see it is a uh, HTTP or HTTPS okay uh, these requests are that are going to the web server okay then this web server will forward the request to the app server okay uh, not only that it is also responsible for showing html uh, css or javascript data okay uh, you can see that you can right click and select view page resource okay you can see uh, css files here okay you can see dot css okay similarly you can see html Okay. for this html is not there you can see javascript yeah, javascript yeah dot js are there okay okay see as you can see html also it is there in this page okay and it also provides static content okay that don't change often okay 
uh, what do you mean by static content is see uh, for every user the space will be same okay uh, whatever it is showing here so whoever opens this website it won't change okay it don't change open it will be same like this okay so this is called static content which don't change often okay and this static contents uh, it is also provided by web server only okay now uh, what are the examples of web server okay uh, the examples of web server are let's say tomcat uh, which you might have heard of and is very famous right okay then you have microsoft ias okay internet information server okay these are the two most famous uh, one okay most of the java applications have the tomcat web server and dot uh, net applications mostly have ias okay Uh, if you go to any interview they will ask you like what is your project architecture and what components are part of your uh, project architecture okay then you have to say my project comprises a uh, tomcat web server okay and you have to like, explain like uh, each and every component like that okay uh, so i hope you got some idea about the web server okay now okay uh, now what is an app server okay so th this is nothing but application server okay this is very very important okay it will take care of all the business logic okay whatever the code the developer is writing okay the entire code will reside in the application server okay uh, the entire business logic okay uh, like the code whatever they write like loops functions classes everything the entire core business logic Okay, how the uh, application should function uh, that everything will reside in the application server okay contents okay. all the business logic and application functionality code okay now uh, what are the examples for this some examples are oracle uh, web logic okay uh, ibm web sphere okay these are uh, famous uh, application servers okay so in, in in your interview again they will ask what was your web server what was your application server in your project okay so you have to tell them uh, my web server was tomcat and application server they used was web logic something like this okay so if they ask you what is an application server you should you should say it is a core comp uh, component where the entire business logic will reside okay uh, whatever the developer writes i mean the code it will reside in the application server okay so based on the requirement okay not every time uh, based on the requirement the application server will further send the request to database server to fetch some more data okay uh, see let's say you are logging to the application so I entered uh, some username and password okay uh, so whatever the username and password that you enter so how does the uh, application uh, application verify whether you entered correctly or not okay let's open uh, IRCTC website okay so you enter some uh, username and password like uh, isha some password demo okay so once you click on sign in okay a request will be sent to the web server uh, with your username and password okay and it forwards it to the application server okay and now application server sends that request to the database server and check if there is any user with the username isha and password demo okay a request will be 
sent to the database server and it will check all the records to see if there is any username okay if it is there then it will validate the credentials and return success response and then you will log in but if it is does not exist it will fail it will give some error okay like some bad credentials okay if it is correct you will be able to log in okay now uh, database server is nothing but it is the server where all your application data will reside And examples are Oracle, okay, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, Postgres, etc. Okay. okay. Now. Uh, out of, out of these three components, okay, at a very high level, uh, can you tell which component or server is uh, performing most complex tasks? Can anyone tell? Okay, actually every server performs complex tasks, but then which component might be taking more load? Okay, it could be app server or database server okay but the application server is uh, very important here because first when you send a, uh, any major request it is being forwarded to the application server first okay this component is the first one to take more load okay depending on the requirement it will send to the dat database server okay otherwise it will not send okay so the application server is handling more load because it contains all the business logic okay if there is any performance issue okay 90 percent of the times the issue can be in app server or database server okay mostly uh, if it is a server side issue uh, 90 percent of the times performance issues will come up in application server or database server okay uh, now let's say uh, from the client we are sending uh, 500 requests okay uh, during performance testing, uh, I'm sending 500 requests. Obviously, uh, the web server will automatically forward that to the app server. Okay. Now, let's say this app server is almost full. Okay. Fully occupied with all the requests coming in. Okay. A single application server is not able to handle the complete load. Okay. Then what will happen? So, from the client you are getting so many requests to the web server which will simply forward it to the application server okay because the application server contains business logic uh, it will take some time to run the code okay it will it needs to validate the code okay if the number of requests keep on increasing okay and the application server is not able to handle them so what can happen obviously it can go down okay uh, the application server can go down uh, maybe the CPU utilization or the memory utilization of that uh, particular application uh, can go very high and finally it can crash. Okay, so to avoid any risk, uh, what they do is they will have multiple instances of okay multiple instances of any server okay like this. Okay, they can have multiple instances of app server like this. Okay. You can have any number of instances. It doesn't mean that you will uh, you will have to have only one or two. Okay. Uh, so uh, everyone has many depending on the application uses. Okay. So now uh, what will happen here is uh, there is some program or some setup that we call a load balancer. Okay. So what it will do is when a few when a huge number of requests coming to it. From the client or web server it will distribute the load equally to multiple server instances okay uh, see this uh, picture for better understanding okay so you can see there are multiple instances of any server okay web server there are many 
app server database server okay and you used load run load balancer okay before every server so whatever the load you are sending it will be distributed across multiple servers based on some algorithms okay uh, these algorithms we'll discuss in the upcoming sessions okay uh, if you see in the course content okay i will open okay see if you see in the course content there is a topic called load balancer algorithms discussion okay we will discuss this uh, later okay so uh, let's say we have a load balancer here okay let's say we have a load balancer here okay uh, some now some uh, 500 requests are sent from the client okay so if there are many requests sent from the client to this okay so this load balancer will equally distribute the load based on the algorithm for, uh, to which it is configured okay so if there are 500 requests are coming so it will send first one here second one to second server again third to here fourth to here like this one after the other it will route the request to first server and second server okay so out of 500 okay Okay, this will get 250 and this will get 250 okay so now in this case because it has multiple instances okay uh, the load will be equally distributed and none of the application server will be overloaded okay because the load is equally distributed neither this nor this will be overloaded okay uh, in some cases what will happen uh, let's say that the client uh, I mean, uh, if the client is saying they don't have budget to add more application server or there is no time, okay, then what they can do is instead of adding new server, okay, they can actually upgrade the existing server, okay. Uh, suppose if this is 6 GB RAM or uh, 16 GB RAM, okay, so instead of adding another 16 GB, they can make it to 32 okay they can upgrade this ram to 32 okay so both options are available okay you can add multiple instances okay or you can simply upgrade the existing instance okay with more more memory or more cpu okay so uh, which one is better okay okay which one is better is it's better to go with multiple instances because uh, it avoids failure okay even if one server fails the other server will take care of the request so if you have only single server so the uh, the chances are if it fails the entire application fails so so it's better to have multiple servers than upgrading a single server okay now okay uh, when you add additional servers okay like this it is called scaling out okay and when you add uh, when you upgrade an existing server it is called scaling up okay when you add additional servers it is called scaling out when you upgrade existing server it is called scaling up okay uh, this is very important okay uh, this is one of the most uh, frequent interview question also okay they will ask what is scaling out and what is scaling up okay when we when we add additional servers it is it is called scaling out and uh, when we upgrade an existing server it is called scaling up okay uh, this diagram okay uh, you have to remember so that it will be helpful for you in the upcoming session okay at the same time it will help you in explaining some interview questions also okay similarly uh, opposite to scaling out it is called scaling in okay if you are reducing servers if you have more servers like uh, five six 
and you if you want to decrease if you want to remove some it is called scaling in similarly so if you have a powerful server of you and if you want to uh, reduce it like from 32 gb to 16 gb it is called scaling down okay uh, any questions till here You can ping in the chart as well if you have any questions. Okay. Okay. So this layer where web servers are there, this is also called presentation tier. Okay. And uh, this is called uh, application tier or logic business logic tier okay logic tier or business tier also and this is called presentation tier okay so this is called presentation tier because it presents response to the client okay when you send a request so web, when you send a request to the web server it sends to the app server then app server sends to database server so it return response comes from database to app app to web server and web server sends it to client that means it presents the response to client so it is called presentation tier okay as a, a business logic is available here this is called a business tier or logical tier and as the your application data resides here it is called persistence tier okay mm. okay uh, so generally uh, the technologies used in web uh, web server are okay so uh, it will be html plus css plus javascript okay for application tier it will be java dot net Python, okay, or PHP, etc. Okay, these are the languages used for uh, developing uh, your application tier. Okay, and these are the most popular uh, presentation tier technologies. Okay, for database, okay, the most famous are Oracle database, okay, SQL Server. Okay, Postgres, etc. Okay, okay. Now we'll discuss about protocol. Okay, uh, there is a client. Okay, and then the client will send the request to the server. Okay, the server will have to understand the request. Okay, process the request and then send the response back, right? Okay. Now the question is, how is this server understanding the request that the client sent? Okay. I uh, see. I click a link and then the request will go to the server. And how is the server understanding the request? Okay. There is something called protocol. Okay. In general, a protocol means a set of rules. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, when a client, uh, I mean, when a request comes from client to the server, uh, it has to follow some rules. Okay, which are called protocols like HTTP, HTTPS. Okay, based on the type of request, the server will respond, process it, and then send the response back. Okay, but it all happens based based on the protocol only. Okay, protocol is nothing but set of rules okay uh, depending on the uh, kind of communication required between the client and server okay uh, this protocol is selected by the architect when designing the application okay 
uh, we need not do anything here uh, the development lead or project architect will decide which protocol to be used so that the communication between the two different components happens smoothly okay uh, see the client is uh, sending something and the server has to understand it right so if the server is not able to understand what the client is sending how will it respond so if the communication that that is happening between the client and server is all about web pages like uh, web request okay then the protocol is http or https okay or https okay uh, similarly if the communication between the client and server is all about transferring files from one location to other then it is called file transfer protocol okay it is called ftp file transfer protocol okay uh, different protocols are there okay i will show you on load runner uh, the different protocols where we can choose okay uh, depending on the project we have to choose the protocol okay for all web pages like uh, http uh, https we can go with web http html protocol like uh, we have seen that in the demo session okay uh, when i recorded one simple script for a web application i have selected protocol called web http html okay uh, similarly if the communication between client and server is all about uh, exchanging emails then you have to use a protocol called smdp okay that means simple mail transfer protocol okay simple mail transfer protocol okay these are just some of the examples okay there are so many other protocols as well uh, and depending on the requirement okay so generally 80 percent of the projects are ui based like web pages only right so mostly uh, we'll use http and https protocols only okay so uh, i will show you okay there will be so many in be using because uh, as i told you load runner is the benchmark tool in the market and the number of protocols the tool supports okay no other tool will support in the market okay but uh, it doesn't mean that we have to learn everything okay we can learn at least two two to three for interview purpose okay even if you go to an interview web protocol and web services are important okay uh, I did not see anyone asking any others than that. Okay, they mostly ask uh, uh, related to uh, web HTTP only. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions till now? okay uh, next next we'll discuss uh, okay failover testing i did not explain this uh, failover testing yesterday so i'll cover that now okay So, uh, failover testing is to check how available the application is. Okay, in general, the application should be available 24 by 7. Okay, we never know who will access at what time. So, the application should be available 24 by 7. Considering that this failover testing is very very important. Okay, uh, let me explain you how how it is very important. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's say there is a server one. Okay. This is server one. Okay. And uh, there is another server, server two. Okay. Okay. These two are different application server instances. Okay. Let's say there is a client from which uh, requests are being taken. Okay. This is a client. Okay from which requests are being triggered. 
okay you can call it uh, as load generator also where, uh, where all the requests are being triggered okay uh, i just told you a few minutes ago that there will be something called load balancer in between okay let's say there is a load balancer in between okay load balancer now uh, from the load generator at the client okay all the request will be sent like this okay okay let's say uh, whatever it is some 500 or 1000 requests are coming like this okay so what is the role of load balancer it will use its own algorithm and simply distribute the load equally okay let's say sum to this okay and sum to this okay now in real time let's say okay if any of the server is down okay let's say server to, uh, server 2 is down in real time okay let's say this is down then what will happen okay in that case other server instances have to support okay that's what failover testing is all about okay if any one of the servers is down uh, then uh, how are the other server instances managing okay are they able to manage the load okay that's what we have to verify okay one of the server is down how are the other server instances managing okay are they able to manage the load okay this is what we need to verify using failover testing okay uh, in this case okay uh, let's say you begin a test okay you inform the developer that you are going to run a load test okay let's say it is from uh, 9 pm to 10 pm okay uh, you want to start a test from 9 pm to 10 pm okay from uh, 9 am to i mean 9 pm to 9 15 pm okay let it run normally okay like this uh, one request going to this server and another request going to this server like this one after the other okay so the load should be equally distributed okay now at 9 15 ask the developer to bring the uh, to bring down the server to okay from 9 to 9 15 normally Two servers okay. at 9 15 9 15 pm you will bring you will bring down the server to okay okay that means the developer will bring this down okay and it will no longer be active okay from 9 15 to 9 30 let it run okay during this time all the request will be routed to server one only okay how because this load balancer has the capability to know that one of the servers is down okay it will automatically come to know that one of the servers is down and not accepting any request okay then the load balancer will route all the upcoming requests to server one okay it will not send any more request to server two okay so from 9 15 to 9 30 all the upcoming request will route to server 1 only okay 15 to 9 30 server 2 is down so all the requests will be route to server 1 only okay so we need to check okay if uh, server 1 is able to handle the load or not okay if it is able, uh, able to handle the load how are the response times coming up okay you can use some apl tool like app dynamics or dynatrace for monitoring okay 
from 9.15 to 9.30, server 2 will be down and server 1 will be handling the entire load. Okay. You have to monitor how it is responding. Okay. Then at 9.30 p.m. Okay. You can ask the developer to bring this server 2 up again. Okay. Okay. So the developer will bring this back to normal okay and it, and it will be up and running at 9 30 okay because you already monitored for 15 minutes uh, like uh, how the server one is behaving okay at 9 30 you can ask the developer to bring back the server okay server 2 up and running okay the load balancer will have the capability to know that server 2 is up and running okay then all the upcoming requests from 930 9.30 will again be equally distributed between server 1 and 2 okay from 9.30 again one request will go to server 1 again next request will go to server 2 and so on okay okay then you have to monitor how these two are performing okay run the test for a few more minutes like half an hour okay then you can stop the test okay We will run for half an hour more with two servers normally. Okay. okay. So the overall goal of running this test is to see if any one server instances is down, how the other servers are managing. Okay, whether the other servers are able to accept or handle the load. Okay. If other server is also able to withstand the load, then how are the response times coming up? Okay, these things are crucial in failover testing. Okay. Uh, in the next session, uh, we'll discuss about uh, NFR gathering. Okay, that is non-functional requirements gathering. Okay, before you start working on any project, you have to ask so many questions to the application team. Okay, it's not simply like uh, if someone is giving you uh, an application for uh, performance testing, you are directly writing script, uh, scripts. No, okay, it's not like that. You have to gather some information okay uh, which information that we'll discuss in the next session okay so any questions for today okay Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, hope you understood the concept that we discussed. Okay. These are very important from uh, interview point of view also. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, okay, let's connect again in the next session tomorrow. Uh, thank you.